Happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome to Seattle Public Utilities Ask Evelyn Live, where we come to you every week and answer your questions about recycling, compost, and other trashy topics. I'm your host, Becca Fong, and I am the Residential Outreach Coordinator, so I'm the person that gets to send you all that awesome sorting information that comes straight to your house. So um, every week we come to you guys with um, answers to your great questions and make sure that you guys keep them coming. They come to us through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and ask Evelyn at Seattle.gov. And I forgot to introduce our episode at the top. This is episode 42, the chrysanthemum conundrum. So we are going to talk all about what the real deal is with floral waste and all of the different packaging that comes with it. With Valentine's coming up and all of us needing a little bit more color in our lives, regardless of if you celebrate Valentine's Day or not, we have a really great question from one of you to kind of talk about what to do with all that stuff. So awesome. And here's my co-host. Hey, everybody. I'm Pat Kaufman. I'm the Commercial Recycling and Composting Program Manager for Seattle Public Utilities, helping businesses recycle and compost. So happy to be here. Thanks. Awesome. So I'm really excited about this question. It's really fun. Yes. You know, Pat and I have talked about flowers. Oh, you even have Chris, you even have mail, you even have asters. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, where they can be seen. Absolutely. So it's just, it's really timely. A lot of folks kind of think about flowers this time of year. And quite honestly, it is just gray and it is cold. And I would love yeah. a little brightness in my life. So, yeah. but there's a lot of things that come with flowers. So, uh, Pat, did you want to read our question? Sure. Happy to. So this came to our Ask Evelyn inbox. That's Evelyn. I'm sorry. That's Ask Evelyn at Seattle.gov. Um, says, hi, Evelyn. I was looking at buying some flowers for Valentine's Day and wanted to make sure that I got a bouquet that has uh, packaging that can be recycled. Most bouquets come with plastic sleeves, these plastic card holders, and a paper um, cart, card. Uh, some have um, foam or wire to hold the flowers in place. And some of them, you know, come with these different attachments and things. So give me a, a safe and good alternative from Samra. Well, quick answer is that there's a lot of plastic and waste in the current floral industry. Um, you know, it's a, it's when you go to the grocery store or whatnot, there's those typical bouquets, the plastic sleeves, the plastic wrap, the little card holder, there's a lot of elements within a bouquet or an arrangement that are not recyclable or compostable. So it really, you have to be intentional. And when you, if you're going to call and order flowers, you have to ask for materials to be used that are compostable or recyclable, or you just have to get the plain bouquet of flowers. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's kind of a nice quick answer. And I think you're absolutely right. You know, it's really being really aware about the packaging that comes with, which those of you who watch our show are definitely very savvy consumers. Yep. So now let's get into some of the details of it. So Pat, I know that you being the commercial sector have definitely interacted with kind of flowers in the floral industry. So what are some alternatives to those plastic sleeves? I mean, say I'm going to the grocery store, I want to pick up a bouquet. Right. You know, a lot of times they're in buckets and then I, I you know, I'll purchase them and they'll be, get put into a plastic sleeve. Right. What are yeah. some other options? Well, when you go to the grocery store, what they give you is, you know, sort of a, a sleeve to kind of make your own arrangement with. Right. And, and, um, and that's one way that they, that they offer you the ability to do it. Most of the arrangements they make are going to be wrapped in a plastic already. Uh, they may have a plastic or, you know, um, poly based kind of ribbon around it right. kind of thing. So a lot of waste you don't need, or maybe you don't want anyway. So a better way to go about it is to select the flowers you want and then, and then take it to the florist in the department in that, you know, part of the store and say, can you arrange these in a flower with just a paper wrapper for me? Totally. So you're, just, you're, you're uninviting all of the extras that they add on to it. A lot of the stuff, the impulse purchase things, the pre-made bouquets, they're going to have the plastic on and stuff. Right. So taking time to, you know, if you have time to go ahead and ask for this ahead of time. Or like we were talking about go, going, you know, to other locations where those are not even offered. If you go right. to some of these farmer's market type flower stalls or down to Pike Place Market where they're there year round providing flowers, either fresh flowers or dried flowers, but a lot of cut flowers are provided at the market year round. Um, that's where you can get just the flowers, you know. Oh, and they right. might put a little plastic bag on the bottom with some moisture in there around the, the soaked uh, newsprint or what have you to, to keep the flowers fresh. But the idea is to be intentional, to think, you know, a little ahead of time 
and try and engage with, you know, with your flower purchases in a way where you can try and get ahead of the, you know, addition of all, all the plastic, stuff. unwanted <laughs> things, all the stuff. Exactly. It's a lot, a lot, it's similar to a lot of things we do, you know, and when you're trying to do waste prevention, when you're trying to reduce yeah. waste, you got to interrupt this system that has kind of created all this wasteful additions added to certain products. And this is, flowers are a good, good example of that. They really are. And, you know, as we were kind of thinking about this, and I was thinking about like, wow, you know, local flowers, like what's available. And like you mentioned, the farmer's markets, we did go online and check it out. And some of the neighborhood markets are online. Mm. Um, I know that you can pre-order, then go and pick them yeah. up, which is kind of nice to make sure that everybody is safe. Um, some of our markets are still operating. So we'll definitely put links right. in the show notes to those different markets. And then yeah. Pat, you've talked a lot about, is it the slow flowers movement, which is really all right. about kind of local flowers. So yeah, you can certainly look at, you know, the hashtag slow flowers. Um, there's another one locally. We were both on a podcast about sustainable floral design. There's some right. really good information to just kind of educate yourself about the fl uh, flowers that you're purchasing in the flower industry, because some things come from shockingly all the way around the world. Yes, yeah. kind of blew my mind. <laughs> and that's another neat thing about the market and and the, the the farmers markets is that they're often local, locally uh, produced. At least the greens and the in season flowers are going to be locally grown. Um, you know, in season during summer, it's amazing. You get all the all the locally grown big flowers. Um, but there are going to be some imports. You know, that these are florists by yeah. trade, and so they need to source the materials that they need to continue making flowers, but there's already forced, I shouldn't call them forced, but early blooming yes. daffodils available. Yeah. I mean, it's February Absolutely. and there's already daffodils out there. They're all tight, they'll open up once you get them in the house. Oh yeah, so, once they come inside. So Absolutely. there's there's already some, some you know, we're, we're not that, you know, we're not in the, like the middle of winter. We're actually, you know, we're actually moving into February here. So, you know, we're getting, we're moving right along. Absolutely. So, um, Got a lot of options there. And yeah, those those great like leaders in the floor industry, Toby Nelson and Deborah Prinzing, and they're just they're doing the work of like trying to lead that industry towards a sustainable, you know, practice. Uh and and that's that's important. They talk a lot about the foam, you know, remember the right. green foam that you'll get in some flower arrangements. And that's that's one of their distinctions. Like you have flower bouquets that just come wrapped and there's a little moisture right. added to the cuttings. And then there's arrangements where the right. florist is making and they use that foam to kind of position everything in there and so that's a that's a tough one that foam by the way just because it's green and it crumbles in your hand it is not compostable no. you, if you get an arrangement if you receive an arrangement you should be removing the flowers from that foam and, and discarding the foam in the garbage because it's a polymer it's a it's a poly formed foam and it's not a compostable product even though the company calls it on their website, you know, biodegradable. It's another one of those moments where it's not, it's not a good product to, uh, yeah. not something that's like, accepted in our compost system. Exactly. It's like styrofoam will break down you know, right. tiny little pieces, but it's still styrofoam, right? That's right. So, yeah. So Samara, I hope that those are some really good tips. If you're picking up kind of your standard bouquet that's already wrapped in a lot of plastic wrap, that stuff has to go in the garbage. Of course, yeah. your little paper tag can be recycled. But I think that there are some really good options to either refuse to have that packaging if you are picking up a bouquet, say at a grocery store where that's, you can kind of build your own, or you can certainly look at some of the options that we put in the show notes for local flowers, which is really great. Or um, some other alternatives too are to buy some small potted plants. Those are really nice. Those yeah. last a lot longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then one thing that has been really lovely, maybe it was just the recent power outage at my house, but I've been thinking a lot about candles and how those are really ah. kind of a nice thing. So. Absolutely. Candles are, they're, they're uh, long lasting. You can turn them on and off, right? I mean, you can light them and blow them up. So whereas the flowers, they're going to on their own timeline. You know, <laughs> you can't really adjust the life of the flower, but a candle you can have around for a long time. And so we we're going to talk about the candle. Candles sometimes come in a pre, you know, provided jar or glass container. And uh, so the, re you know, glass as a recyclable item, jars and bottles are all the same kind of glass. So that's why we accept those in the recycle system. But candles, even if it looks like a jar, we can't be sure that it's the same type of glass as what a jar of, you know, applesauce would come in or something. So we're not, we don't accept candle glass in the recycling. Totally. And so Pat's awesome segue, which is my weekly waste tip. 
which was yeah. candles. So I've been thinking about those a lot. And I brought a couple of examples, like you often get them in these kind of glass jars, right? And right. so this is not made out of the same tempered glass no. as bottles and jars. So you can kind of have two options. My weekly waste tip is either to, I will burn the candle out of this baby and then I'll probably reuse it. And what I'll do is probably choose a pillar candle or something that can yeah. be refilled in here. Mm -hmm. So those are always really good options. So you can reuse the jar they come in or you can choose candles that don't have an outside, but this should not go right. into your recycling. But, yeah. you know, there's some really great candles out there now. Um, they have, you know, soy-based candles, beeswax candles, which tend to burn longer than petroleum mm -hmm. and have less of an impact on the environment. So that's my weekly waste tip. If you want to get something to brighten somebody's day, you can go with a candle. Very nice. So my weekly waste tip is about a box of chocolates, right? So Ooh, I love I mean, there's a lot of different a lot of different chocolate boxes out there yeah. uh some, sometimes the box itself is okay it'll be like yeah. a heavy cardboard kind of box you know not all of it some of it has like a foil layer on it so that's that's out that's a no-go once you're inside the chocolates though pretty much all garbage i mean except yeah. the chocolate right the chocolate we want but the trays they're off they're just so flimsy that's not the grade of rigid plastic that you would equate to you know, a, a clamshell to go food container or, right. you know, the kind of tray that you would get under like, you know, a sushi to go sushi or something like that. So the point is you really want to like give it that if it makes that twisty crinkly kind of thing. Uh, I, I wish I had a sample, you guys. I just don't have a box of chocolates laying around yet. But, Not yet. <laughs> um, but that, that flimsy tray plastic is no go. It's a garbage item. And then the other thing I want to mention is the chocolates themselves sometimes, not always, but sometimes come with that little tiny kind of like a cupcake paper, the little mm -hmm. pleated, you know, holder. And those often these days, I mean, maybe back, you know, many years ago, they were paper, but they're, they're, they're poly plastic coated material or they're fully plastic, who knows uh, now. So I wouldn't put those in the compost. Yeah. I mean, these are not, these are not, I mean, like a cupcake um, paper is a compostable item. Those are paper. But when you get into these packaged products that are shipped and they have to have a certain shelf life and such, uh, those are a lot of times plastic. And totally. so I would say no go. So that's my tip is go ahead and go with the box of chocolates. If you do, uh, the box itself is probably recycled, but everything inside, aside from the chocolate, is, is garbage. Yeah. Everybody's eating all that chocolate. That's so right. Pat, we did have one question um, okay. about somebody bought a little basil flower pot at the supermarket and had a little sponge on the roots. They didn't know what the name of it was, but they wanted that helps to keep the humidity. So they wanted to know where it goes. So I haven't seen that product. I don't know if you've seen those, but my, I would wager a guess that it probably has to go in the garbage. Yeah, it would. Um, that's not a product that is, would be called, you know, food and beverage packaging. Right. So remember the things that can go in our yard waste cart are yard waste, food waste, and approved food and beverage packaging. So that item seems like a, an item that might someday get tested and approved by the compost facilities, but it's, it, it would require the company to go to the compost facilities and get tested and get approved, and then it would have to be labeled. And so just the fact that it's in there, uh, it might even be colored green or something, I would not take any of yeah. that as an assumption that it's compostable. Uh, it's great if it's plant-based, if it's made of natural fiber or something like that. We've talked about that, how yeah. sourcing materials in your products, you know, that's an important part of the, the big picture but I would not put it in your in either your recycling or your compost cart. It would be garbage. No, probably not a good way to go. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, one that did remind me of one thing. I have certainly been at stores where they have kind of plastic compostable flower sleeves. Again, just like what you were saying, it's not an yeah. approved food packaging product. Right. So it has probably less impact than a petroleum based plastic sleeve, but shouldn't be going into our compost carts. We don't know exactly how that's going to behave. So Every once in a while, there'll be a product where it's the same substrate as like something with they've, the company that makes the wrap might be making a, a burger wrapper or a sandwich wrapper or something like that. Right. And so it might be the same material, in which case, you know, there'll be a possibility that it, it might have the same markings on it, like approved and compostable facilities, uh, BPI approved, which is right. actually the Biodegradable Products Institute. So there's definitely some indication sometimes on materials other than food, pretty closely related, like flowers in the grocery store or something like that. But you can't assume that that's the case. You really have to look for all these uh, indications, markings, and, and messaging from the manufacturer to feel comfortable about that. And then at the same time, if it's not locally tested, we wouldn't right. say 
we wouldn't be able to say it's a proof for sure. It's just totally. I like it though. I like that these companies are moving in that direction. You know, they're trying to find again plant based materials, renewables, and then compostables. The next step, and they just have to get their items tested and approved. Totally. So, good questions, guys. Keep them yeah. coming. And right. I wanted to give you guys one reminder because it is so chilly this week. And I think yes. there is a little snow in the forecast, depending on which weather app you look at. Um, so we wanted to remind you guys to get the latest on how our services are going to be handled. We encourage you to look at hashtag Seattle weather or Seattle winter. Um, and certainly get yourself signed up for Alert Seattle and the Recycle It app. Because if you have service interruptions, if that happens, it's usually not the snow, it's usually the ice. Um, but we will send you the most up-to-date information if you get onto those two apps. They're fantastic service. I subscribe to both of them. I know, Pat, you're on them too. It's just a really great way to get kind of up-to-date information on what's going on with your solid waste services. So. Yeah, you could just follow SPU on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, anything like that, and, and you'll get the updates because we certainly push out messaging you know, through yes. our social media channels. Uh, as soon as the snow hits and we get information from the haulers, because you know it's a partnership between yeah. The city's contract management team and then the haulers themselves, they have to, they run around town at oh dark 30 in the morning, checking on streets and hills and seeing whether or not they should send their trucks out or not. So it's a, it's all about safety and we'll Absolutely. pick it up eventually. It's just it maybe, you know, Thursday. I, I'm not sure. I think they're all steam ahead for tomorrow, but I uh, can't, I'm not for sure saying that. But Friday <laughs> will be the day. Just yeah. looking at the forecast, you know, it looks like it's going to start snowing yeah. sometime Thursday. So Yeah. So keep an eye out, definitely. Hashtag Seattle Winter. Sign up yeah. for the Alert Seattle app and the Recycle It app as well. And we'll get you that up-to-date information. And keep those questions coming, guys. Tomorrow, great question this week. And we hope that, you know, we continue to hear from you guys. Keep them coming. We love it. Yeah. And with questions. that, that's another episode. And I'm Becca Fong. And remember, life's simpler with less stuff. That's great. I'm Tack Hoffman. Remember to recycle right. We'll see you next time. Bye.